Welcome to Gospel Tangents, the best source for Mormon history, science, and theology. I'm Rick Bennett. What polygamy evidence exists from the Nauvoo period? We're going to learn more about the Sarah Pratt case, Hiram Smith before the High Council, and other evidence that appeared that Jilda practiced polygamy in the Nauvoo period. You won't want to miss this conversation. Check it out. Now, up to this time, Joseph only had up to eight. Is that yeah, right? about, yeah. His, it's, and, it's does that include Fanny? Uh, no, no, no? I, I'm not okay. counting her in that. Um, okay. So I think it is. And so um, really, they, they, pr they pretty much uh, get a handle on it, though. They really do a lot of things. And, you know, uh, the other it's now much so there's the incident of Sarah Pratt, where John Bennett writes a letter that Sarah Pratt um Sarah Pratt was uh, uh, approached by Joseph, proposed to by Joseph while, while Orson Pratt's out on a mission. Mm -hmm. That letter comes out. Orson Pratt nearly commits suicide. They find his suicide note outside the print shop in Nauvoo, and there's a search, and they find him about five miles down the river, just distraught. Because mm -hmm. he's asked Sarah about it, and she says, yes, that happened. And he wow. says, I don't know who to believe. I don't know who to believe Joseph. Or I don't know who to believe Sarah. And they so get, Sarah said yes, and Joseph said no. Yeah. And so they cover what they give. And so with, with and, and so the story is, they say, is the uh, story that the, uh, the response to that is that Sarah Pratt had an affair with John Bennett. And so she's just saying this to throw off, um, you know, suspicion onto her. Uh, I don't know. Maybe she did. But have she's got suspicion either way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so, well, I mean, you can kind of go back to see. You can see how a lot of these things. If you look at a lot of these public incidents in isolation, you can see how they could go either way. And so, when I said that, I think that polygamy skeptics, like I can see where they're coming from. If you look at a lot of these, these public, these public um, situations, you can see how they could go either way. Like I said, the Chauncey Higby case. When I noticed that, when I said about the court, like what was happening there? Did Joseph? drop the case because Chauncey Higby then subpoenas Nancy Reagan and Sarah Pratt, and they're going to come testify in Carthage, and Joseph doesn't want that to happen. Is that why he drops the case? I don't know. There's not any direct evidence. But, or does he drop the case because uh, he just didn't think it was important anymore? He thought he proved his point, and he, he just wasn't able to pursue it at that time, and he just didn't think it was important enough to revive. I don't know. I can't say for sure. If you're looking at these events in isolation, yeah, I mean, yeah, because I mean, because these are things where, again, it's almost a he said, she said, they look at these things, it's almost like a he said, she said situation. You have Joseph that says, no, this isn't what happened. This is what happened with Sarah Pratt. And yes, you have John Bennett saying this, and it's between those, like, who do you believe? And John Bennett is not a reliable person. Sarah Pratt has some reliability issues. Between I'm those like two, Jose Canseco. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. So, so, I mean, so. I mean, I say that, that I'm saying that because I, I mean, I am some, uh, looking at things like this. I, this is where I, I'm, I'm at least sympathetic to people like the crisis, to, to people, you know, to polygamy skeptics in general, because you, you look at these, 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 uh, these public things and you can kind of see how for a lot of these, they could go either way. If you're looking at them in isolation. But um, and, at some point, don't you say, hey, when well, there's this much smoke, there's got to be a fire. Yeah. Um, you know what? That was actually addressed at one point. Um, Joseph said that too. He says, I hear people saying that and it's not true. Um, if there's, but yeah, I mean, if you look at this too, I mean, this is an incident that involves the Rigdons. This is an incident that involves the Pratts. These aren't just random people. These are high ranking people in the church. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's hard to say. I mean, so I like at one point, Orson, um, Orson Pratt objects and they take a, they take a vote about sustaining the good character of the prophet and Orson Pratt goes, I abstain. <laughs> and he yeah he does he does that vocally yeah and oh, wow. and um they said and and then joseph and he says because about the spiritual life doctrine he says and joseph says well wait have i ever have you ever seen personally me ever do anything untoward in that nature and he goes no i haven't and then there's then there's people respond to him the first person to respond to him is Brigham Young, who challenges him about the spiritual life doctrine by accusing Joseph about the spiritual life doctrine. And it's Brigham Young that writes to Parley Pratt, says that, say, writes to Orson's brother Parley, who's still in England, says, yeah, we've had this deal with, with uh, Orson and Sarah, 
he's been, you know, his wife has sort of led him astray on this. Um, but Orson's too good of a guy for us to let him go. We're going to get him back. And he, and he, and he gets, and he gets, and he gets, um, um, he comes back in full fellowship. Well, and it's funny that Orson ends up being the guy who makes the public announcement. And it it is. Yeah. And so, I mean, it really does make you think about a, a lot of these things too. I mean, how does that, that all work out? I mean, if, if like, let's say the apostles really were the secret cabal that were practicing polygamy in England, why is Orson Pratt publicly accusing Joseph while he's alive and, and all this, like it, it, I mean, there's a lot of these things that just, that just really don't fit. Mm-hmm. And so there, so there's that incident. And, um, but a lot of these, I'm not even sure if I know what really happened there. Did Joseph really propose to Sarah Pratt? I don't know. Cause I mean, you had those, you have, cause it's really just, uh, but I mean, but there's things that would suggest that they did. I mean, yeah, well, Sarah, I don't know. That's hard to. There's there's a part later on where John Bennett sends a letter to Sidney Rigdon and Orson Pratt. It says, after what's happened to you, you should want to join up with me, and and fight this good fight and stuff, and you know, and 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 do it. And they and Sidney takes it to Orson, who takes it to Joseph, and says, "Look, I'm not on board with Bennett." I'm not, I'm not your enemy and such. And that's one of the things that helped them reconcile. But at the same time, it's like, well, did John Bennett really think like, why would John Bennett send them a letter trying to solicit their support? If he had an affair with, with Orson Pratt's wife. If Bennett had an affair. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and he's, and he's sexually slandering and he made public ridicule out of, out of Sidney Regan's daughter. And so, I mean, there's stuff like that. I mean, there's stuff like that that you can say, Maybe he would. I mean, he's a pretty flamboyant guy, John Bennett. I mean, he yeah. maybe he would. I don't know. I, I don't know. So th- there's a lot of those things. And so, but then that's Bennett. And so, but then um, around in early 1842, uh, there's still some like Hiram Smith is still not aware of his brother's activities, and he's still very much against it. There's one point where he received Kimball. It says Will and Kelly's journal. This is when William Clayton comes on board. He says, Brother Hiram's lead is, uh, we're afraid that he's lay, trying to lay a snare for the secret priesthood, meaning polygamy and people doing it. And, um, but then a few days later, it says, uh, Hiram has come aboard. He's accepted the priesthood. Or uh, William Clayton writes that. And we have a lot of evidence, and I think we'll, we'll probably get into this in the course of the discussion, that what happens is, is Hiram hears that, that, Polygamy has come by revelation. That's something Joseph has by revelation from God. And he gets a testimony of it. He gets all into it. And so that's when in that's when in July they um they he asked, he has Joseph says, if I can just you know have a written revelation Grandma. on this, yeah, then maybe Emma will come around. I mean that higher and so um so you know they <laughs> dictate it to Wayne Clayton. Wayne Clayton writes about it in his journal. Um, and they go and they have uh, Emma doesn't want anything to do with it. Um, they, uh, you know, and Joseph says they'll transfer the unencumbered lots to Emma, which is actually reflected in the uh, the records that it was around that time they transferred a lot of the unencumbered lots in Nauvoo to Emma and, and put in Emma's name to give her some kind of security, you know, because she's afraid that this is what the fallout might be. But what's really, um, what really sets things in motion is Hiram takes this thing and um, he thinks that now that there's revelation on it, people are going to come around like he did. And in a lot of cases, he's right. People do. But there's a few, there's, there's a few cases he doesn't. And um, so one of those, one of the things he does is he takes it to the high council. So he's, uh, he's in the first presidency, so sometimes he's co-president of the church. So sometimes, so there's sometimes where he sits in, where, he's, where he presides over the high council's proceedings. And so in August, um, he shows them the revelation. And uh, there is are... Is the high council minutes? No, the high council minutes says receive some instruction for that day. They say receive some instruction from Brother High and Brother Marks. You see, every kind of every kind of evidence is going to have its limitations. I mean, even like journals have their limitations because they're, you know, they're often hastily made and they're fragmentary and they don't they're kind of day to day. And a lot of times people 
tend to talk about day to day mundane things. And uh, but and 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 a lot of times meeting minutes are very brief, and it's unfortunate, you know. Kind of like what like with the Fanny Alger incident with with Hiram's or with uh, with Oliver Cowdery. I mean, Joseph talks about how there was girl business, but the minutes don't elaborate on that. So we don't. So we were. So we really don't know. But so the high council minutes don't really. So, but um, there are three members of the high council that are not on board with this. They are William Marks, who's the who's the uh, who's the state president, and William Marks is a neat guy because he's uh, he's a guy who's totally faithful throughout the whole thing. He's totally privy to all the secret stuff going in Nauvoo, the Council of Fifty, pro marriage, temple ordinances. Uh, he's he's privy to all of that, but he doesn't really like that thing. He's not really into that. Um, but he kind of hopes that it's good. He says later, he writes, I just kind of hope that that was all pass. <laughs> so he doesn't go past it. And, and he says, and he says, I would hope and we go past and we go back to the true good version of Mormonism that, that I remember from Kirkland. And so, um, so he's one of those. Another one is Leonard Sobey. And then another one is Austin Coles. Austin Coles, he doesn't like it. And then a few... Shortly after that, a couple of weeks after that, uh, or a few days, yeah, a few, time, a few days after that, Austin Coles brings charges against George, uh, George J. Adams for practicing pro, for, for, for practicing pro marriage. Now, what had happened was he'd been accused of soliciting poor wives back east when he was on his missions back east the form of the 12 took his license away it would have had to been the form of the 12 would have taken his license away and after he provides testimony against benjamin winchester who's another person that had been accusing joseph of doing these things um joseph gives him his license back reinstates him and then so austin cole says all right he brings charges saying he's continued to do these same things he brings he brings evidence against him and the high council does nothing And he resigns a few days later. So the other people that see this revelation, so the next thing you have are the laws. So, so the laws are the ones that in the beginning of late 1843, early 1844, the law, William, Jane, and Wilson law are the ones. Now, what exactly, the laws are another one. I mean, the laws are where there's trying to figure out their, um, their motivations. It's, uh, it's kind of like, like, you know, there's, there, there's all kinds of things. Was William Law aspiring to an office? Was William Law, did, did William Law commit adultery and was upset that he wasn't allowed to uh, um, have, his, have his temple ordinances or be sealed to a poor wife because he had, uh, because he had committed adultery? Or did Joseph uh, propose to Jane Law? We really don't know. There's so much conflicting evidence uh, about that, that, that it's, it's pretty hard to do. So his motivations, uh, you know, and, and do they start off did they start off where he's really sincere and then later on he's not? I don't, I don't really know. It's hard to say. Mm -hmm. But in any case, um, there is the deal where in uh, January 1844, where there, Joseph and um, William Law are holding a meeting, a uh, city council meeting, and, uh, and uh, William Law is uh, speaking to, um, is questioning a witness. And he said, he asked him, well, what did we talk about? He says, well, we talked about, what did you and I talk about on that day? He says, well, we talked about how um, the, the doctrine of plurality of wives, uh, the rumors about it, it's really messing up families. It's causing a lot of pain to a lot of people. And William Law says there on the record, he goes, and don't you think there's some truth to those things? Because Joseph and Hiram blew up the matter before the high council and the elders quorum. And, um, so Joseph responds by saying, a man who promises to keep a secret and doesn't cannot be trusted in anything. So kind Meaning of- Meaning that Wilson broke a secret. That, 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 Will bro that William broke a secret? Yeah, yeah, that he did. So like what secret did he break, right? <laughs> and so it kind of inadvertently, yeah. So, um, and it's after that, that things really start to fall out between uh, Joseph and, and the laws. And so William Law starts to the Reformed Church. And a number of people join. And so one of the things you'll hear a lot is that all these people coming out, they're people with these um, ulterior motives, 
that are not people of good character. And that might be true. That might be true of William Law. Like I said, that's a hard call. William Law, he's kind of a, what's the phrase Winston Churchill had? He's kind of a, he's kind of a, he's kind of a riddle in, wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma. I mean, there's so many of these things where, you, um, where it's hard to tell, but there's a lot of people, there's Austin, one of the people that joins up with, 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 one of the people that joins up with him is, uh, is Austin Colts. Another one is James Blakesley. He was a, he was a fantastic missionary. He comes to Nauvoo. He wants to investigate it. He investigates and he becomes convinced that it's true. He talks to first people that know first hand of Joseph Smith's polygamous. And so he starts preaching it. James Blakesley goes on to become an apostle in the RLDS church. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what I'm saying. He's the kind of person. So then, of course, so um, William Law's... Um, his attack on there is really two prone. The one thing he does is he files criminal charges against Joseph in Carthage for um, for unlawful cohabitation with Mariah Lawrence and others, and that goes before a grand jury. A grand jury indicts him. People in that grand jury include active elements, including like including um, and then people from the morning. It includes Daniel H. Wells. It includes um, William Marks. He's there on, and is part of it. It includes uh, Willard Griffith. So that includes the a lot grand of the, jury includes all these people. Includes some of the, includes Mormons, and they say that there is probable cause. They indict him, so they say that there's probable cause that these charges against Joseph Smith are true, and they bound him over for trial in October for October 1844. Now, of course, that trial never happens, and we know why. Because because Joseph died before that, but had Joseph not been killed in June 1844, then there would have been a full on trial about polygamy. So that trial that you want to have, well, Joseph was put on trial. That almost happened. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. And so and but one of the things, of course, the other thing they do is they publish the expositor. And right. the, expositor, the expositor really does it says a few things about polygamy. It says things that like, oh, well, they're taking these women and, um, you know, it, it exaggerates some things. You know, they're leading them out in the wilderness if they say no and all kinds of things. And, mm -hmm. But what it also has is it has three affidavits by Austin Coles, William, William Law, and Jane Law. And William Law says, you know, Hiram gave us a revelation. It allowed for uh, people taking plural wives. Jane Law says this did, and it said you can take up to 10. Doctrine and Covenants section 132 doesn't say you can take up to 10, but it does mention if a man take 10, 10, 10 wives and they are virgins, it says that at one point. And then Austin Kel and then Austin Coles has an affidavit in there, and his is detailed. He said, you know, and he said, um, he said late last summer, you know, Hiram Smith read a revelation to the high council that was that the first part said that you know if, uh, if a person was sealed up to eternal life and they could they could not lose their uh, exaltation unless they commit murder and then it talked about how um abraham and um jacob and had their doctrine in taking plural wives and it says that it allowed for man to take plural wives and so he gives a description that's actually a really good summary of doctrine and covenant section 132 as we know it, it's brief, but a pretty, pretty, um, pretty comprehensive um, summary there. And so he says, he said, Hiram, Hiram read that to us. And so, um, anyhow, the interesting thing about that is Joseph and Hiram's reaction when they hold the city council meeting a few days later, and this, and the minutes of this is published in the novel neighbor. Um, that's when. Um, Joe, that's when they say, well, we need to address this. Hiram says, well, what Austin, what Austin Coles said, um, he was mistaken. He doesn't call him a liar. He says he's mistaken. He says he thought that, that, that um, the, the doctrine about plural, plurality wise, that that applied to the current day. It does not. It only applies to the former times. So this only, this only explains why Abraham and Jacob were doing it. This only uh -huh. talks about them. It's, it has no bearing to the point today. So he must understood. Later in that same meeting, Joseph says the revelation was about 
how I was thinking about the verse in the New Testament about how um, in the heavens they never either married or given her marriage. And it says, well, that, that a man and a woman must marry with a view of eternity mm -hmm. to be married in the, in the, in the hereafter, which actually it, the, the revelation does talk about. And, um, and so he says, as he says, that was the entire subject of the revelation. So you see a problem there. So, so they're saying that in reaction. So they give a partial. Um, this is one of the things, you know, when I said about how uh, Israel Smith uh, starts finding these things and he starts sort of walking back the very definite position he had earlier about it not happening. This is one of the things he sees. Mm -hmm. He says there definitely was a revelation because, uh, I mean, this, these two topics together, um, that, I mean, these two accounts together, you have the expositor, you have Joseph and Hiram's response to the expositor published in the Novi Neighbor. That's an official church source. That excludes the possibility that what we know as Doctrine and Covenants 132 is a complete later fabrication from the Utah period. Which is what the polygamy skeptics love to claim. Oh, uh, well, no, that's what they did. That's what Joseph Smith III and people Okay. Yeah. Well, Denver Snuffer does that too, doesn't he? No, no. Denver Snuffer actually doesn't. Denver Snuffer, uh, the argument they make is that this is another one of those things. We have two versions of the story. We have the one accuser and we have Joseph's defense. And so, so why should we prioritize Joseph's account over, over um, Austin Cole's? And the laws. Why, why should we take their word over theirs? Like, they're both giving opposite things. I'll, and so, I think this is. Good. I think the revelation is the best thing to look at if you really want to get into this, because there's just so many sources about it. And you know, and if the revelation, Doctor Guns 132, is authentic, then that ends the debate right there. It doesn't matter who Joseph took his pro wives. He taught it. Doctrine and Covenants section 132 says very makes it very clear that that kind of plural marriage you know, includes having children or poor wives. It says the man cannot commit adultery with his poor wives. Right. That's that, if that, if that document is authentic, that solves the debate. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with attorney Mark Tensmeyer. In our next conversation, we're going to talk about Leonard Sobey. He was not a follower of Brigham Young, but was a member of the High Council in Nauvoo. What did he say happened in the High Council? He goes out to Leonard Sobe and asks him, what happened? You know, what really happened? And Leonard Sobe tells him, Hiram Smith read a revelation on pro marriage, and as near as I can recall, it's the exact same revelation the Utah Church put out. It's the exact same. Oh, document. wow. If you'd like to hear the entire interview uncut, please subscribe to patreon.com slash gospel tangents for just $5 a month. Patreon is spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash gospel tangents. If you'd like to watch the entire video, you can subscribe at YouTube, Patreon, or on my website at gospeltangents.com and click the yellow subscribe button for just $8 a month. PDF transcripts are just $10 a month, and you can get those on patreon.com slash gospeltangents or on my website. I'll send those to you as soon as I've finished completing it. If you'd like to get a paperback and PDF, just subscribe for $20 a month at either Patreon or on my website. Individual paperbacks are available at Amazon.com. Just do a search for Gospel Tangents Interview, and you can find all of our past interviews there. Share your Gospel Tangents pride by purchasing a t-shirt on our website at gospeltangents.com shop. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts at tinyurl.com slash gospeltangents. You can get our latest updates by friending me at Facebook, or you can also follow our page at facebook.com slash gospeltangents. Become an insider and you can see the newest videos. Follow us on Twitter at Gospel Tangents. Click here to subscribe, here for a transcript, and over here we've got some of our great videos. Thanks again.